This is trailblazing. And the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off super detox special at InfoWarsLife.com. Well, we've been covering the protests there in Marietta, California. Citizens there are very upset, actively stopping these buses that are bringing in all of these unaccompanied minor illegals. They're saying, we don't want this in our town. We don't want our taxpayer dollars to go and pay for this illegal activity. And of course, they've been in a face-off with La Raza the last few days, as well as pro-immigration activists that have really escalated the situation there. So we sent our reporters there to California, and now we're gonna check in with Jakari Jackson for an update. So Jakari, describe to me the situation there on the ground in Marietta now. Well, that's like you said, Leanne, we're here in Marietta, California, the InfoWars crew, myself, Kid Daniels, and also Joe Biggs, and of course, Josh, our cameraman, we're right outside the Border Patrol station. And this is the site where you've seen a lot of those videos, people blocking the streets, all these buses coming in, uh, busting in the illegal aliens who are pretty much being transported by ICE, being transported by the Border Patrol. Many of these people are pretty much disgusted with their agencies right now. They say they don't want to be state-funded coyotes. They don't want to be the ones responsible bringing these people in here, especially the people who actually live in these communities, because I haven't had a chance to talk to uh, the Border Patrol, the ICE agents personally, but some of the other people that have been here for a while, they say they have had a chance to talk to them, as well as the police department, and they say, you know, the off the record, the police, the Border Patrol, the ICE agents, whoever, say mostly that they're not for, you know, bringing all these kids in here. And it's not a racial issue. It's just a, a fact that they can't support all these people. Because you think about these people, they may have two or three kids and the wife at home, and now they're being asked to uh, support financially two or three more kids. You know, they can't do that. And it's just simple math. It's simple economics. And it's the same thing that we've seen in San Bernardino ca uh, counties and also other places as well. Right, well, exactly. It's a calculated crisis, and no one calculated the cost of how much it's going to cost us, how we're actually going to go ahead and pay for this. And taxpayers are speaking out and saying, not my town, not my taxpayer dollars. And that's the, and that's the whole thing. Can they just say, uh, think of the kids, think of the kids, and people mm -hmm. are like, well, I'm thinking about my kid. How am exactly. I going to feed my kid? How am I going to give my kid an education when we have these failing uh, school systems with the no child left behind? It's bad enough they're teaching them that, but then if they have to split the time to teach out these classes in Spanish, you know, then it leaves these, uh, these other kids at a loss. So everybody's thinking about their children. They all want the best thing for the children, but taking on somebody else's financial responsibility isn't necessarily, people, uh, necessarily something that the people here in Marietta want to take on. Well, we have reported today that an ICE agent actually kind of admitted that they have been given a stand-down order. They've been told to go ahead and take a little time off, a little paid time off. Are you seeing a lot of border agents there? Or? Well, right now, we haven't seen too many people outside the facility. And, you know, of course, this is the Border Patrol Station. There are a few guys outside. But as far as ICE, we have seen no ICE agents. There are a few cop cars rolling around, a few sheriff's cars rolling around. But other than that, we haven't seen any, uh, any ICE or any other feds besides uh, just the Border Patrol here. So I wouldn't be surprised if those guys are taking some time off. I'm sure they didn't fight it too hard. You know, who wants a... Who wouldn't want a Obama-sponsored vacation? You know, you get to sit at the house while your country is falling apart. But as I said already, these guys, you know, a lot of them are good guys. They don't want this to happen to that country. They're just, you know, doing what they have to do to get a paycheck. Right, and I'm sure a lot of those cop cars that are actually rolling around aren't there to catch any people illegally entering the country. They're there to They're harass They're pretty much crowd protesters. control. Yeah. That's pretty much crowd control. But as you can see right now, we're in the free speech zone. Uh, there <laughs> isn't much of a crowd out here to be controlled. So it's a pretty, pretty lax presence. That looks a lot like our border. Yeah, and the thing I want to point out, since uh, Josh is looking over here at the Border Patrol facility, uh, if you guys can see it on our cameras, the Border Patrol facility has a better fence than the border itself. Uh, it's a, it's a well-constructed fence that goes all the way around the property. Meanwhile, our own borders are left wide open. You have huge gaps in the fences. And I understand that having a fence on a border is something that could be easily manipulated or have, you know, uh, be adversely affected by weather and so forth. But that's why you need a presence on the border. Exactly. 
Now, we're also hearing a lot of reports. You you reported, of course, on the church groups uh, here in Texas that mm -hmm. were, you know, busing the illegals to cities unknown, but they were also taking care of them, providing food, clothing, shelter for these people. And, of course, that is, you know, that's in the heart of these faith-based groups. But now we're hearing that there in Southern California, Catholic churches are also agreeing to bring in a lot of these unaccompanied minors for a month or more, and they're calling upon their their uh, church t to also take in these kids. What do you think about that? Well, you know, I understand that you have these faith-based groups that are doing what they think is best, but I think their, their goals or their vision is very short-sighted. You know, they say, well, we'll bring these kids in, but how's that going to affect the people that are already here? You know, and at least to the, to the credit of the church we spoke to in McAllen, Texas, the Sacred Heart, they said that none of their children or none of the children they were housing were there by themselves. They said they only were taking children with the mothers. But, of course, we've also seen the reports about how you can uh, rent a kid, or uh, how, how the saying goes, how you can click up with, with a child and be uh, brought into the country because they're less likely to send you back if you are coming here with a child. Right, and of course, according to the, the DREAM Act, those children can be up to 31 years of age. Yes, which is completely ridiculous that you can consider a grown man or woman a child uh, just because they're under the DREAM Act. Right, asylum for everyone. Now, we saw a video of La Raza actually at the protests uh, earlier uh, yesterday. A few days ago. Mm -hmm. Was that, were they, are they there today, or, or do you have any word We haven't seen, we, we personally have not seen any La Raza here today. Like you said, they had been here previous days, uh, but none here today. But we did hear, we got a tip, we have to confirm this, but we did get a tip that they're going to be speaking at the Moretta City Hall tonight around 6 o'clock. So we'll be there with our cameras to catch them if they are there and, and definitely try to find out uh, what their view of the situation is. Uh, one of the uh, protesters here were telling us that La Raza is going to have some type of a money bomb. So once again, that's something we have to get confirmed, but we'll be at the courthouse to, or the, should I say the, uh, the city council meeting to find out exactly what's going on. Well, I guess that's one way to go ahead and take care of this crisis is to just have a money bomb because they know that there really is no plan for how exactly we're going to be able to pay for all of this. Jakari Jackson, thank you guys so much, and we will report with you tomorrow. All right, thank you. Well, as you could see from the footage there, it's pretty much a ghost town there at the protests right now, and that's because everyone is at work, and everyone is at work so they can pay for all of these illegal immigrants that are being shipped into our country. That is the awful irony, and that's why those citizens there are so upset. And of course, we will check back in with the crew there in California for an update of what's going to happen there at that council meeting this evening. So thank you all for tuning in to the show tonight, and we will be here again tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central.